Hello my people. Okay, in the last video uh, we reviewed kind of what the trapezoidal rule was all about and how it related to uh, Riemann sums of the left hand and right hand variety. Uh, oh, by the way, the, uh, the, actual, uh, the actual area under that curve is seven and two thirds. So seven and a half is a pretty good approximation, especially for so many subintervals. Um, let's go ahead and, and let's work on this example right here. Uh, we have the inter we have the integral <coughs> of uh, this function, and let's go ahead and just define it as f. Right, f is one over the square root of one plus x cubed. Uh, and let's go ahead and um, <coughs> at least try and show those subintervals here on the uh, on the graph. So it's between here and here, right? Our interval is um, uh, zero to one. Uh, unfortunately, the graphing program that I use only doesn't, doesn't give me an option of chopping it up into thirds, or at least I haven't figured out how to do it yet. So we'll just kind of ish it. Uh, this is 0.25, so point, you know, one third is probably right about there. And two thirds is right about there, okay? And then of course, uh, since this lays kind of flat, it's kind of hard to see, it's kind of hard to kind of discern the difference and what difference it would make. Obviously, the more something curves, the more that the trapezoids are advantageous, uh, have a greater advantage for finding the approximate area. Uh, so we have those. Now, if we're going to, if we're going to go ahead and do this, let's let's go ahead and plug this function into our calculator. Go to do to do. So we have um, actually, let's just go ahead and call it one plus uh, x to the third, and we'll just raise it to the negative 0.5, right? Since that's basically what it is. Uh, hate to use the decimals, but whatever. Uh, and let's go ahead and change our window so that we can see it on here on the graph if we want to as well. Let's go negative one to two. And actually, let's go ahead and do our x scale here by thirds, uh, since we actually have the freedom to do that. And we have negative one uh, to two as well on this. And let's go ahead and graph. Okay, so you know, we see the fact that it's the same. Now that we have it plugged into our calculator, we can use our calculator for, uh, for evaluation here on the main screen, right? And so we know that it's going to be n is equal to three. So my delta x over n is going to be one minus zero over three, uh, which you know isn't that hard to discern right here. You know that if from zero to one and there's three subdivisions, the width of each of them is going to be one third. Uh, and since it's a uniform width, I actually, you know, can use my uh, integral notation and say it's approximately uh, one third. And then I simply have to evaluate f at zero, two times f at one third, two times f at two thirds, and then f of one. That's the formula. And of course, it should make sense because, you know, uh, and then of course, I've forgotten the all important one half out here, right? Uh, because you're taking, this is, uh, this first trapezoid is f and f of one third. So, okay, sorry about that. Um, and basically, you know, it runs up like that. So we have, uh, let's go ahead and just use our calculator. That's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and do one over six, and we'll just open up the parens right here. And we're going to have y one at zero plus two y one at, um, and let's go ahead and use a official uh, plus two times y one at, and we'll do the official two thirds, and then plus y one at one. 
And it, what we get here is we get um, 0 0.905. And that actually is a good approximation because you see the fact that um, it's just shy of one, right? Because if this has come straight across, the difference between this area and a one by one square is simply this overage right here, right? Uh, and so let's go ahead and see what the actual integral is and see how good the, see how good the approximation is. We're gonna go from zero to one. Thankfully I already have it plugged in so I don't have to redo it and y one, yeah. And so the actual integral, the actual value is 0 0.910, right? And so the approximation here is really good. And of course, I think the approximation is, is that good largely because of how flat the function is and exactly how close the, that side of the trapezoid does mimic uh, the actual curve itself. And of course, that's the point, right? That's the whole point. Alrighty, let's go ahead and do another example. Uh, this one is going to be uh, sine x over x. And uh, let's go ahead and remind ourselves that this is a question that we're being asked about this function. Now, what that means is that it's probably a good idea to go ahead and <clears throat> uh, plug this into our calculator, sine x over x. Now we're going from pi over two to pi. So on a window, uh, let's go from zero to maybe uh, three pi over two. And since we're going to be between pi over two and pi, which is since our delta x is pi over six, basically, let's actually use that in here. And let's go, yeah, negative one to two. That's actually a pretty good y. And there we go. Now, unfortunately, like, you know, there's limitations for the uh, program that I use. And so rem we need to remember that if we're doing this, that pi over two is 1.57. So it's a little bit past, a little bit past uh, 1.5. So that is, you know, we'll sort of draw it just a little bit past the 1.5 line. There we go. Uh, and it's going to go all the way to pi, which of course is here at this point of intersection. Now, if I'm going to chop that up into thirds, let's go ahead and add uh, pi over six so we can do a little bit of, so we can, you know, estimate it as good as possible on our graph right here. Uh, so the next one is just over two. So it's probably right about there. And then the next one is 2.6, so it's right about there, okay? Uh, and so what we're going to have here is, and again, this is, especially the way I've stretched the graph, it's, it's relatively, the, the trapezoid is gonna, is gonna go relatively right along the graph. So it's gonna, unless you zoom in really, 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 uh, really, really close, uh, it's gonna look indistinguishable from the graph. But uh, we know that our delta x is going to be uh, b minus a over n. So it's pi over two over three, which is pi over six, what we just said. And so if we're going to estimate this integral by means of the trapezoidal rule, oh, sorry, I need the dx in there. Uh, we need the delta x, and since the width of all those subdivisions is consistent, uh, we can pull it, we can factor it out, right? And then we need f of pi over two, and then two f of pi over two plus pi over six. Now remember pi over two is three pi over six, plus pi over six is gonna be four pi over six, so that's actually two pi over three. And then two, uh, and then you're gonna add another pi over six, that's going to be f of five pi over six, and then that's going to be f of pi. Alrighty, let's go ahead and plug in. So we're gonna start with our delta x out here. Let's go ahead and put parentheses. 
and we need our y1 uh, and then we'll do the uh, parentheses and this is going to be a pain but we'll just sort of grind it out here uh, plus 2 y1 of uh, let's do it another so 2 pi over 3 lots of fractions plus 2 y1 of uh, 5 pi to, oh, sorry that's 8 let's go down 6 uh, plus y of sorry pi and then close parens and our approximation is going to be 0 0.966 now let's go ahead and see how good that approximation is if we're going from pi over 2 to pi of y1 in terms of x hmm where did we go wrong do 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 and the thing is is that um hmm I don't know. Uh, did I get the there? Yeah, I got the function right. Uh, I have pi over two to pi. Uh, this first one was definitely pi over six. Okay. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, it may just not be a very good approximation, so I may be wrong. I may have just stretched this out a little bit, uh, and I may have made an arithmetic error somewhere. But we're not going to dwell on it right now. I'm more interested in whether you sort of understand kind of what's going on rather than uh, did we actually make a keystroke error here somewhere. It doesn't look like I did. Uh, but um, let's let's not dwell on it uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one and this one is uh, we're going to be dealing with the function f of x is equal to e to the x squared we're going to go from 0 to 1 and it's going to be four sub intervals. So one minus zero over four. I know my delta x is one fourth. So if I'm approximating the integral, uh, and this is supposed to, of course, be the squiggly equal sign because it's approximate. If I'm approximating this using the uh, using the trapezoidal rule, uh, then I need to. Uh, oh, hold on! I forgot to divide by two on the last one. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I just forgot to divide by 2 because, you know, I'm just going too fast and that's what happens when you uh, talk and teach at the same time. So see, that actually was a really good approximation. So I just forgot to divide by 2 because, uh, so basically you need to slide in here a 1 half, right? And then, so this is divided by 2, and it's equal to 0 0.483. Ta-da! All right. Let's try to remember that this time. So 1 half times the delta x. So I'll get the 1 half in there this time. Uh, let's go ahead and draw the, uh, let's go ahead and draw the trapezoids. Now, when you're dealing with the trapezoidal rule, you need to remember that uh, the trapezoid and the concavity will t together will tell you uh, whether it is an overestimate or an underestimate. Because if you're dealing with, um, if you're dealing with uh, concave up, obviously you're going to, you're going to have an, uh, an overestimate because, and you might not be able to see it on this one, uh, if this curves down, but you're drawing straight across, it's going to come over the line, right? And so your trapezoid is going to have a little bit higher value. You can see a little bit better on that one. Uh, unfortunately, these uh, colored highlighter, these colored pencil highlighters, don't have wonderful, uh, wonderfully sharp tips. And if they did, they wouldn't actually show up as well. So. Uh, and so that one again, you, you can sort of see the fact that when I 
when I draw this, it's going to be over the line. And so this is going to be an overestimate. So we should expect the actual integral, if we are to go ahead and plug it into our calculator and evaluate, will be, uh, will be under what we have here for our trapezoids. Now, we're going to, of course, plug in in terms of f of 0 plus 2 times f of 1 fourth plus 2 times f of 1 half, plus 2 times f of 3 fourths, plus f of 1. That is what the formula tells us. Okay. Let's go ahead and plug this function into our calculator. We're going to get uh, e to the x squared. Let's go back to our main screen. And we'll have uh, 1 eighth which is of course the one half and the delta x together and then we'll just you know y1 of 0 plus 2 times y1 of 0.25 plus 2 times y1 of 0.5 plus 2 times y1 of 0.75 plus y1 of 1 and our approximation Mm -hmm. Let's go to the error. Where did I get an error? And, oh, there we go. I for, I missed here. That needs that needed to be a another another parentheses. Okay, and the approximation is one point four nine one. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see how good that approximation is. We're going from zero to one of y one dx, and the actual. Right, is equal to 1.463. Pretty good approximation, right? Which, of course, visually we should see. Now, we're going to go over one, uh, and I usually don't introduce too many AP problems in the midst of the year. I like to sort of save them for the end because the last thing I want to do is communicate that the whole point of this, uh, the whole point of this class is to pass a test at the end. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to go ahead and emphasize the fact that trapezoidal uh, is one of those methods of approximation that does show up. Okay, uh, It says, as a teapot cools, the temperature of the tea is modeled by a differentiable function h for t between 0 and 10, where t is measured in minutes and temperature h of t is measured in degrees Celsius. Values of h of t are selected values uh, values of h of t at selected values of t are shown in the table above. Okay, and if you were to get you know this, you would need to recognize a couple of things right off the bat. First of all, these intervals are not of uniform width. Okay, uh, so the delta x cannot be factored out, right? Because the width of each of those subintervals is different. Uh, but you can still use the trapezoids, right? Uh, you can go ahead and set up those ordered pairs and connect the dots. It's just that the trapezoid that is formed between this ordered pair and this ordered pair has a width of, or you know, when you turn it on its side, it has a height of two. This trapezoid has a height of three, this trapezoid has a height of four, and this trapezoid has a height of one. And height, of course, is in parentheses because it's actually the width of the subinterval. But um, it says, using correct units, explain the meaning of 1 tenth, 0 to 10, h of t. Okay, well, the first thing is, is that's the average value, okay? Uh, remember that when you take the area under the curve and then you divide it by the width of the interval, you get the average height over that interval. And if the height, of course, is h of t and is degrees Celsius, uh, the height base, basically this this integral right here, okay, this right here is basically the average temperature of the T uh, on 0 to 10 uh, in Celsius, in degrees Celsius, okay. That, of course, does not have to do with our trapezoidal sum, but it says use a trapezoidal sum with four subintervals, and of course, four subintervals was decided for you, uh, pretty much. Uh, uh, the four subintervals indicated by the table. Okay. 
Well, I know that 1 tenth, 0 to 10, of h of t dt is going to be 1 tenth of the trapezoidal rule. Well, the trapezoidal rule is 1 half, okay? And then it's going to be 1 half, <coughs> um, and, you, and you don't have to pull out the 1 half. You can actually leave it in there if you want to. But basically, the area of the first trapezoid is uh, base 1, base 2, averaged, times the width. The second one is base 1, base 2, averaged, times the width. The next one is base 1, base 2, averaged, times the width. And I'm kind of running out of room here, aren't I? Uh, base 1, base 2, averaged, times the width. Uh, and basically all you have to do is plug that into your calculator. Uh, I will go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and do it. That's fine. Uh, we can go ahead and simplify this first, though. Uh, we can pull out the, the 1 half. So we have 1 over 20, 1 over, shoot, 1 over 20. And then it's basically um, 126 times 2 plus 112 times 3 plus, and I'm just making sure I'm not making an arithmetic error, so pardon the, pardon the slowness, uh, plus 87 times 1. So that's going to, you know, a little bit of upfront keeps me from having to make too many keystrokes uh, as I walk through this. So 1 over 20, let's open up the parens, <clears throat> and we're going to get 126 times 2 plus 112 times 3 plus 96 times 4 plus 87. <clears throat> uh, and what I get here, and let's go ahead and, uh, sorry, uh, let's go ahead and clear that. And let's turn, let's do for the answer, uh, let's turn it into a decimal. <clears throat> so it's equal to 1059 over 20 or 52.95. And of course, 52.95 is the average temperature. Now, that, that should make sense. And we want to go back and always check our answers because that is certainly between 43 and 66 uh, and actually is pretty close to the median temperature, right? The temperature that happens to be halfway through. So the average temperature, according to this approximation, is really close to the median temperature, according to the chart. And that should give us some comfort that we're at least in the ballpark, right? Now, real quick, just in case you care, uh, this is the scoring guideline on that part of, of that question. And again, it says, you know, it has the first part, which is, is the average temperature of the T in degrees Celsius over the 10 minutes, okay? And all three of those pieces need to be there. Average temperature of the T in degrees Celsius, because remember that it, it specified in correct units, and then over the 10 minutes. The T not in general, but over the 10 minutes discussed, right? Uh, and of course, this is right here, uh, the same thing that we did. Let me zoom in just a smidge so you can see it. Sorry, I cut and pasted it from the scoring guidelines. Uh, and this is exactly what we got. We got 52.95, which is, of course, the only reason I turned it into a decimal, because I knew that we needed to check it against the scoring guidelines. One point would get for this first part, giving you all three pieces. The second point is for the trapezoidal sum. And the uh, third one is for the calculation of that trapezoidal, uh, that basically monstrous arithmetic problem right there. So, all right, let's go ahead <clears throat> and we'll do this. This is the last problem that we'll look at. This is actually from our textbook. It's number 30 in this section. And it says, in the widths in meters of a kidney-shaped swimming pool were measured at two meter intervals, okay? <clears throat> now let's go ahead and remember that, you know, two meter intervals means it starts there and it ends there. Uh, use Simpson rule. We're not going to use Simpson rule. We're going to use 
trapezoidal rule, okay? We're gonna use the trapezoidal rule to estimate the area of the pool. And the fact that it, that it doesn't have a particular base doesn't really matter, okay? Because ultimately what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna tilt this a little bit. There you go, right? Despite the fact that one of them is not, one of them is not flat upon an axis, when you do this, they're still trapezoids, right? And you still know the you still know the height of the trapezoid because, like they said, it was it was basically taken at two meter intervals across the pool. And so, if those are still trapezoids, then I don't need one of the edges to be laying flat on the axis. That's that's actually just so we have that prejudice because that's just the way it's always been done. Uh, this one is a little bit more difficult because it is a triangle, but what is a triangle but a trapezoid where the top base is zero? Think about that for a second. Okay, now a triangle is just a trapezoid where the top base is zero. Okay, so I can still do this. Uh, I simply need to remember that each one of these intervals is two meters. And therefore, since all of those are two meters, uh, I basically am going to basically put the area is approximately, now remember the one half, okay? <clears throat> and then I'm going to do it, this is my delta x, two. And then basically these are the outputs, right? And so the output of the first one is zero, plus two times 6.2, plus 2 times 7.2, plus 2 times 6.8, plus 2 times 5.6, plus 2 times 5, plus 2 times 4.8, and plus 2 times 4.8, and the last base is 0 again. Well, the great thing about both this base and this base being zero because they're triangles and not trapezoids is the fact that the moment that I do that, these of course cancel out. I can factor out that other two and then I simply am multiplying two times the sum of those values. 6.2 plus 7.2 plus 6.8 plus 5.6 plus 5 plus 4.8 plus 4.8 and that ought to give us our estimation. So 6.2 plus 7.2 plus 6.8 plus 5.6 plus 5.0 plus 4.8 plus 4.8 and then we'll multiply that by 2 and the approximate area that we get is 80.8 meters squared. Okay. And that ought to be a pretty good, I mean, it's going to be a little bit of an underestimate and you should be able to tell that largely because of these triangles here at the end, right? You're missing the, these portions of the area. <clears throat> uh, but, and like I, what I said earlier about a triangle, if I have a triangle, if I basically have a triangle and I want to treat it uh, like a this is base one and this is the height and this right up here is base two. The area of a trapezoid is B1 plus B2 over two times H. Well, if B2 is zero, that's one half base times height, right? So, you know, that and that, and that should make sense to us, okay? Um, and therefore, I could basically treat these triangles just like trapezoids, just understanding that those outputs at the end were zeros. Okay, um, I hope, you know, and the thing is that trapezoidal rule is not really one of those things that's all that challenging in terms of concepts. A lot of times they're just burdensome and tedious, and I understand that. Uh, I do, however, hope that uh, this little bit of review uh, helps us to sort of keep this idea of approximation, especially approximation of area by use of these means at the forefront of our mind so that it's not so tedious and burdensome uh, come AP review time in the spring. So if you have any questions, please do shoot me an email. Bye.